Well, friends, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let us worship God. Would you please join me in the call to worship printed in the bulletin? The Lord supports all who fall down, straightens up all who are bent low. All eyes look to you, hoping when you give them their food right on time. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. O Lord, the righteous all your ways, faithful in all your deeds. Come, let us worship. Our first hymn is what a friend we have in Jesus. Friends, it is only by the power of God that we are able to stand against evil. Trusting in God's grace, let us turn to God in prayer with the prayer printed in the bulletin. Together. Holy One, you are the master baker. You provided manna in the wilderness for the Israelites making sure they had enough for each day. And you continue to provide grain, yeast, and water so that we can enjoy our daily bread today. Lord, you have made bodies for us that need a daily intake of nutrients and fluids. You have given us a world that can sustain us and so many forms of plant and animal life. We are sorry that too often we waste our food, buying too much or allowing it to go out of date. We are sorry that we have got out of the habit of sharing what we have. We are sorry people in our country must swallow their pride and ask for handouts from food banks because we are not doing enough to ensure that everyone has enough to eat. Forgive us, Lord. Challenge us anew 
to share what we have with others and to stand up and speak out against injustices. Remind us of how fragile our bodies are and how important it is for us to look after them and help us to share our daily bread with others. Sisters and brothers, hear the good news. Hope does not disappoint us, for God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us in baptism. Believe this good news and give thanks. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Sovereign God, let your word rule in our hearts and your spirit govern our lives until at last we see the fulfillment of your realm of justice and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from the Psalms, Psalm 104, verses 10 through 15. Listen for the word of God. Lord, you put gushing springs into dry riverbeds. They flow between the mountains, providing water for every wild animal. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. Overhead, the birds in the sky make their home, chirping loudly in the trees. From your lofty house, you water the mountains. The earth is filled full by the fruit of what you have done. You make grass grow for cattle. You make plants for human farming in order to get food from the ground and wine, which cheers people's hearts, along with oil, which makes the face shine, and bread, which sustains the human heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we've been talking about prayer this whole time. And so for the young disciples this morning, I was talked about a different kind of prayer. You see, we've been, we were showing you the, the breath prayer and we showed you the five finger prayer. Now I'm going to teach you a different kind of a prayer. Um, as, as, um, Nancy's often, often says to me, you know, Presbyterians, we just love words, too many words. And that's sometimes true of our prayers, too many words. So sometimes it's hard to sit still for that long of words. So I'm going to teach you the perfect prayer for that. A motion prayer where you actually get up and move around because some of us just can't sit still. So I'm going to do this prayer. And I'm going to ask everybody that would like to at home to, to repeat. It's each line you can repeat after me. But it involves movement. So you can do it sitting down. It's better if you do it standing up. But you, either way works. So this is the prayer. Thanks be to God for this day. For all that is above us. For all that is above us. For all that is below us. For all that is below us. For all that is before us. For all that is before us. For all that is behind us. For all that is behind us. For all that is around us. For all that is around us, for all that is within us, for all that is within us. Thanks be to God for this day. Thanks, Thanks be to God for this day. Amen. Amen. So there you go. That's how you can start your morning. <laughs> and you get a little exercise and stretching in the, at the same time. Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven. Yes, what is it? Uh, please, I'm praying. Oh. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hello, I'm here. 
Could you wait till I'm done? <laughs> I did? Yes. You said, Our Father who art in heaven. Oh, I was just reciting the Lord's Prayer. And I was answering. Ah. Uh. Go ahead. I'm listening. Um, right. Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You really think so? Think what? That my name is hallowed. Hallowed? Yes. You know, holy. Do you respect my name? Well, yeah, I guess I do. How about yesterday, on your way to work, when you got behind that slow bus? Oh, that. Um, hey, I, I didn't mean what I said then. How would you like it if everybody went around shouting, Oh, Derek, every time they hit their thumb with a hammer or got held up in traffic? Sorry. I forgive you. Look, this is going to take forever if you keep interrupting. Would that be so bad? What? Talking with me forever. I don't know. I never thought about it. Well, do. It might happen. Oh. Go ahead. Keep going. All right. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Whoa. You sure you want all that? All what? My kingdom coming and my will being done? Actually, I, I kind of like the on earth as in heaven part. We could use a little more heaven around here. So what are you doing about it? Me? You want my will done. Who did you expect to do it? Well, I thought since it was your kingdom that, uh... You can't have a kingdom without subjects. No, I guess not. Hey, it's not that hard. All you really have to do is love me with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, brother. Him too. <laughs> Look, can we get on with this? Sure. Don't let me stop you. Right. Um, I forgot where I was. Give us this day. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I, I got it. Give us this day our daily bread. You could use a little less bread, actually. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, no, not that kind of bread. <laughs> What do you mean? I mean, you could use less of what you want and more of what you really need. All I asked for was a little bread. And today, the bread I'm giving you is a half hour of Bible study, a free evening spent with your family, and a $100 deduction from your checking account for the World Hunger Charity of your choice. All that just for me. Just for you. You really shouldn't have. <laughs> hey, I like to give you good things. Thanks a lot. Come on, on to the rest of the prayer. Hey, look, this is kind of dragging on. Why don't we just take a break here? There's not that much more, Derek. Uh, I'd really rather stop. Derek? Okay, okay. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. What about Kathy? I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> well? Look, after all the things she's done to me, you expect me to just forget about it? I don't know. How do you want your forgiveness? With or without forgetting? Oh, come on. You know she's not the least bit sorry, and she treats me like that all the time. I mean, enough's enough. Whatever you say. What do you mean, whatever I say? 
Well, it's up to you. Right now, I'll forgive you for everything as long as it's not a repeated offense and you apologize first. What? As you forgive, so you are forgiven. You said it. Oh. What do you think? I don't know. I can try to forgive her, but what if I can't pull it off? I'll tell you what. You do your best, and I'll do mine. Okay. And don't worry. My best is pretty good. Yeah. Now, just a little bit more. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't that kind of a strange thing to pray? I mean, you're not going to lead me into sin, are you? I don't know. You spend half your time asking me to. What? You love being tempted. You're always hoping I'll arrange things so you'll be helpless in the face of passions beyond your control. Well, maybe once in a while I wouldn't mind a little innocent excitement, but... Derek, if you can honestly ask me not to lead you into temptation, maybe that means you're halfway resolved to avoid it yourself. All right, you got me again. It seems like every time I open my mouth, there's something else you want me to change. Sometimes you expect a little more out of your immediate family. Come on, time for the big finish. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Derek? Derek, do you know... What would really give me glory? I'm afraid to ask. Just, just keep talking with me, okay? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I can manage that. Amen? Amen. Thank you. I think it was uh, 2012, I went to the um, worship and music conference at Montreat, and one of the worship leaders was a group called Friends of the Groom, groom referring to Jesus, the bridegroom, and uh, their leader, Tom Long, has written a number of scripts, and that was just one of them. Uh, hopefully, over the next, you're going to hear a couple more of them. They're, they're very well written. He's very witty. Um, and it's a great uh, acting troop that, that does puts these on and does workshops. So thank you for doing that. I'm going to uh, read. You've heard the Lord's Prayer. I feel like you've already heard the scripture for this morning. But I'm going to read another version. This one comes out of um, the Common English Bible, which is the version that uh, they've been using in the Sunday school classes. Uh, listen for the word of God. Jesus told them, when you pray, say, Father, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who has wronged us. And don't lead us into temptation. Jesus also said to them, imagine that one of you has a friend and you go to that friend in the middle of the night. Imagine saying, friend, loan me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine on a journey has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. Imagine further that he answers from within the house, don't bother me. The door is already locked and, I, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up to give you anything. I assure you, even if he wouldn't get up and help because of his friendship, he will get up and give his friend whatever he needs because of his friend's brashness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, there's almost nothing better than the smell of bread baking in an oven. As soon as it comes out, you just got to rip off a 
a piece. Slather on some butter. Oh man, that's about the best. Bread has got to be one of the most universal foods. I think nearly every culture has some form of it. Bread has been such an essential basic food for centuries. Perhaps we shouldn't be surprised that it appears in the Lord's Prayer. Give us the bread we need for today is how this particular translation went, or as we're more used to hearing, give us this day our daily bread. Now we've turned a corner in the Lord's Prayer. The first three petitions are all about God. The second half of the prayer focuses more on us, on our needs. Beginning with bread, with food. Now I can relate. And I think most of us can relate to that better than we can relate to kings and kingdoms. We always say, if you want to get people to come to a church meeting, serve food. The best part about food is that it's biblical. So preachers have lots of opportunities to talk about food. It's all over the Bible. You know, starting at the Garden of Eden, working the way through the story of the Exodus and the Passover meal, and then manna in the wilderness, and then there's Isaiah's vision of a great feast on God's holy mountain with great wine and rich marrow. And then there's all those gospel accounts of Jesus having meals with outcasts and all kinds of folks and feeding thousands. And then even you're working your way to the book of Revelation at the very end where the city of God has trees with plenty of fruit to eat. Gathering around the table is such an essential part of our Christian identity and our faith. We trust in a God who offers us overflowing mercy and blessings, including food. Prayer to God can and should be practical. And I think you don't get much more practical than asking God to give us our daily bread. In part, it does also acknowledge our dependence on God. And that all we have been given is, in essence, a gift. The reverence to daily bread brings to mind, of course, the story of the people of Israel wandering out in the wilderness, surviving on bread from heaven, manna. Each day they were to go out and harvest only what they could consume in one day. If they tried to hoard it, it would go bad. Each morning, God would supply what they needed for the day. All the people had to do was to trust that God would do that and be good stewards of what they received. Now, this petition makes an important claim. God is concerned about our physical, earthly needs, not just spiritual. In the years leading up to the Civil War, churches, especially in the South, had no problem with slavery, in part because they considered the church's focus to be on the world to come not on this world, to focus on spiritual matters, not economic matters. But in this prayer, God cares about what happens here and now. And so should God's church. Last week, I said how difficult it is for Americans to pray about a kingdom, even if it's God's kingdom. But, it's, but is it also hard for us who rarely have to worry about where our next meal is coming from, to pray, give us this day our daily bread? Maybe not. Especially if we realize the request is not just about me and my, but us and our. Give us this day our daily bread. Because in praying for our daily bread in this prayer, our well-being is connected with the well-being of others. We are asking God on behalf of others, as well as ourselves. And there are so many others in need. A study in 2018 revealed that over 37 million people in this country are food insecure, which means that they are unable to consistently have access to adequate amounts of nutritious food necessary for a healthy life. And over 11 million of those are children. And frankly, in this pandemic, those numbers have grown. That should be shocking when you think about it. 
especially in this country where we have the means to do something about it. The thing about prayer is God hears our prayers, but then calls on someone to do something about it. Kind of like you heard in the skit. I mentioned the story of manna in the wilderness. The people had cried out to God while they were in Egypt, and God set the people free. Except really, more correctly, God chose Moses to lead the people to freedom. Mother Teresa has said, said years ago, I used to believe that prayer changes things. But now I know that prayer changes us, and we change things. Last week we did a five-fingered prayer, an intentional way to pray for those around us, those in our lives, and those around the world. And after we pray for all these people and for ourselves, we hold our hands open to listen, to discern God's will. We keep our hands open because we cannot listen when our hands are clenched tight in a fist. And we cannot listen when we are holding on so tightly to something that we need to let go of. But with open hands, we can receive and we can share. We can pray and we can act, both. And that is this week's prayer practice, action as a form of prayer. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus repeatedly connects prayer with action. For Jesus, prayer is not an escape from practice. It is the inner side of practice. Action is constantly dependent on prayer, and prayer leads to action. When we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we are offering ourselves as a means for God's response to that request. So this week, I invite you first to say table grace at every meal. And many of you probably do that already. But I also encourage you to put four cents per person per meal aside at each meal. Do that deliberately, intentionally at every meal. Then, when we have our four cents a meal offering on the third Sunday, you can bring it here or send it into the church. That will go to help the Mac House and other charities working to end hunger. It's a way to take that prayer and actually turn it into action. And by the way, with this disaster that's been created by Hurricane Laura, we have another opportunity to link prayer with action. We are called to pray for the victims, but we can also donate to organizations, as I mentioned, like Presbyterian Disaster Assistance or the Red Cross. That is action, which is our prayer, a prayer that shares God's love and really gives glory to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Friends, let us turn to God in prayer. Lord, we pray for the world, for its fragile state, its vulnerability, its ongoing need for renewal, its ongoing demand for action. Lord, help us to accept that life is not permanent, that ecological systems and weather patterns are always changing, and not fully in our control. We are most aware of this, seeing the images of devastation brought about by yet another hurricane in the Gulf. We pray for those affected by Laura in Louisiana, especially those communities on or near the coast that were ravaged by the wind and storm surge. Lord, move us to actions of relief and hope. But also help us be aware of what we can do 
and how, what we can change, and how we can encourage our leaders to do all they can to care for the long-term good of our planet and its people. Almighty God, it feels as if we are lingering in the wilderness with threats all around us. We wonder when better days will come, when the public health crisis will abate, when the violence in your world will come to an end, and when your people's suffering will cease. Ease our anxious minds, encourage our trembling hearts, embolden our sometimes struggling faith. Attune us to those sights and sounds, those wonders and miracles that you make manifest through ordinary acts of compassion and everyday gifts of bread. That you, the maker of heaven and earth, call out to us that you know us by name and that you entrust us with doing divine work sounds us and frightens us. As we haltingly say, here I am, and seek to faithfully fulfill your call, remind us again that you are with us, always and forever, surrounding us with your peace and your power. Recognizing that you, Lord of all, have observed many injustices and too much sorrow in your beloved world, we ask you to reveal to us how we are to intervene. And we begin with praying for those people and places and circumstances. May our unity in Christ be leaven for the whole world, a witness to what it means to love genuinely, to outdo one another in showing honor. And this time we also pray for the sick, and for those who grieve the death of loved ones. We pray for essential workers. We pray for teachers and administrators and school nurses. We pray for students returning. And we pray for the unemployed. Do not let us neglect to do good, to uphold the weak and to strengthen the faint-hearted. May we be so knit together that no one falls through the cracks. We pray also for anyone known to us or not who will go to bed hungry tonight, who will not receive their daily bread today, and who do not know if they will receive it tomorrow. Move us to awareness and action. As we grow weary with the upheaval of these days, Send the flame of your Holy Spirit to set us ablaze with your power. Help us to be the light of the world you call us to be. May we freely lose our lives and be saved through the one who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Once again, a reminder, we do have the offering plates here. And again, thank you to everyone who has been so faithfully giving to the church during this time. Um, either dropping it off or sending it in through the mail. Appreciate it very much. It allows us to continue to do God's work. I ask you to please join me then in a prayer of dedication for all of the gifts that we have received um, in the past week. Printed in the bulletin together. Holy God, we give you thanks for the beauty of the world, the care of family and friends, and many other gifts. Most especially, we thank you for pouring your love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Through these offerings, may your love spill over in glad abundance that brings relief, renewal, and hope to those in need. 
In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our last hymn is one of my personal favorites, and unfortunately I don't have my instruments to hand out to everybody, the maracas and all that, and the tambourines, so it's kind of neat to go with that. But this is um, a wonderful tune. Uh, the tune comes from Jamaica, but it's uh, some great words um, that remind us of using the gifts that we have to share God's gifts with the world. Let us count and times and glory. Let us count and tongues and toy, reaching out with a shout of joy. Bread is broken, bow wine is poured. Christ is spoken and seen and heard. Jesus lives again, earth and breathe again. Pass the word around, loads of God. Pass the word around, loads Pass the word around, loads of God. Let make us one. At his table, he sets the tone, teaching people to bless and to bless. Love and word and deed express. Jesus lives again, earth and breathe again. Pass the word around, loves all bound. Jesus lives again, earth and breathe again. Pass the word around, loves all bound. Jesus calls us in, sends us out, bearing grief in all world of doubt. Gives us love to tell, bread to share. God, Emmanuel, everywhere. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again. Pass the word around, loves all bound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again. Pass the word around, loves all bound. Sorry, I forgot to I forgot that last those last two lines repeat. Oh well. Thank you for hanging in there with me. We, yeah, we'll get it the next time. Maybe we'll have to do this more often. Friends with bread to eat and friends to share with. With a place to meet and with people to meet with. With a space of welcome and people to welcome. Let us go in God's name, the God who meets us, the God who feeds us, and the God who welcomes us home. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.